in Shanghai with Jia Jun, who is a architect and architect with uh, Gensler here in the Shanghai office and uh, works in other offices too, including Denver, and you're working on the Shanghai Tower Project. Uh, as we sit here in September of 2012, uh, tell me how the project is going and what you're looking forward to over the next couple of years. Yeah, I think the, uh, the project is going uh, very well in terms of the, so far it's meets the schedule, and also we think it uh, meets the expectation in terms of qualities we like to see. And but still, there's a lot of challenge ahead. Although the design part is mostly done, but it's still, the design never ends until the building is built. You know, so there's a lifespan, and uh, until the building is in the operation, you, you still need to come into. So I think uh, uh, we are looking forward to continue the, the process with that tower, and with the client and the constructor, and the potential tenant together to to make this a, a great destinational a project for the city of Shanghai and China. What uh, you're one of the architects on the project. What uh, what portions of it did you work on? I'm uh, actually the uh, I was the the one actually is directing the entire project. So I'm like a principal for the project, and uh, um, my responsibility really uh, uh, to first of all is coming a concept to win the competition. After winning the co competition, is a really to, to organize a great team, and I have great team members uh, globally to not only just Gensler, but also other, other consultants from around the world to support us and to work with the client diligently and also government together to uh, carry through the design, various design process. And, uh, and then do the construction, we still as an advisor so to uh, observe any situations uh, come along uh, uh, with the depths of constructions, and we, so we can maybe uh, we can uh, make suge suggestions and uh, make an adjustment, and uh, and uh, also make an improvement that uh, undergo. So that's how we. Uh, so I'm the one actually. Is also, is between the link between our team from the United States and team here, and also the client and contract. So to make the process work as much as bad as we can. I've, I've talked to uh, the people behind both of the other buildings in this trio, the yeah. architects yeah. behind Jin Mao yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Shanghai World Financial yeah. Center, and there's been a lot of talk about how these three buildings interact. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, it's been called past, present, and future, but I'd like to know your view. What were the considerations in designing the Shanghai Tower? Yeah. So, Jeff, I, I think a, it's a very important thing is, uh, you know, a, a, as a professionally, we're speaking, we have a great deal of respect at, and admirations for the other two architects, they created two great buildings. That's number one. And number two, and uh, because it come out of this kind of respect, and it come out of this already as big existence, reality, um, to, to the city. And uh, they all, undeniably, undeniably, they all have a great impact for the, for the built forms for this great city. So when we come into design during the competition stages, so we think we have to design a solution, not independently looks very iconic and unique, but has to make three buildings together. They all harmonize together. Yeah. So, so Jing Mao, these three buildings as a as family. So actually, I don't think we should call it past, present, and future. That's a little bit I think maybe misleading. In a way, I think it's more like a family. So in China, you know, people in the family, we all always respect elders. You know, you see what I'm saying? Always respect elders. So in this family, we think that Jing Mao is like a grandfather of the, they are the grandfather of the new high rise in China, although they're only uh, like 15 years old. But in China, speed is very fast. So I think that Jing Mao is like a grandfather in the family, which also have a great deal of connections to the past of Chinese architecture. And uh, uh, Shanghai World Financial Center is a much more like we call the mi middle age. You know, so they are they designed in the nineties, um, late nineties, and it be built in the early twenties. So that building is reflect the, the growth of Chinese economy. You know, and so the so so they are the, like the the, the 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 middle parent in the family. So I, I think the Shanghai Tower, I would say, is a new kid on the block. Is the is the is the grandchildren of the all of the family. So they are they're young and useful 
you know, and 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 they have the future for them is, is about timing how they grow towards the the next generations of the tenant, the market, and the, also the social political uh, circumstances. So I, I think each building reflects the era of how China grow. So that's how our, we, we view it. So that's why we designed the building as very light, transparent, have very useful energy. In the spiral, you know, is where how the how the world is being is composed, the form of existence. You know, we we call it you know from you know the smallest you know that uh, uh, electron of our, our our matter. The, their existence in, is in a spiral, constant spiral form. And the, our cosmo in the world, you know, universe, universe, because of the uh, the gravity, the gravity between the the stars create. You know, a, a spiral movement. So you have central energy. So we think a spiral is appropriate form, it connects the very small things and the very large things, and and it's kind of transcended from the earth to the heaven to link them together. So we think it's appropriate form first. Second of all, we we pick this form because it actually works from a, from a uh, aerodynamic kind of a, uh, uh, that uh, um, physic physical force because it's a reduced the wind load. And which is a very single important thing for tall buildings, particularly in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So actually, it works scientifically, and also we think as a, a, a metaphorically and, and uh, as a metaphor, it links the time across the time zone, links the, you know, the to the future, but also helps us to reduce the cost of the steel bracing for for for, uh, for the lateral movement. But also we think uh, the form works very. Symbolize the city of Shanghai as well. But Shanghai is a water water city. First, the Huangpu River, Suzhou Creek, all those those river connected build the city because of the commerce of the, the the river will be able to provide. And all the Shanghai Street is non symmetric. It's always kind of meandering because all they are, they are built on the the creeks. You know, the, the creeks become the road roads eventually. So I think that that's. Somehow the form, I think, is very about Shanghai, about, uh, reflects the city of Shanghai's character. I think maybe that you may have answered my question. I think it's a real accomplishment to design a building, and these three are literally across the street from each other. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. This is one of the most amazing skyscraper places on earth standing <laughs> in the midst of these yeah. three buildings. But the Shanghai Tower really does not upstage yeah. the other two at all. No. No. Is it and, and you and you've described the you know the theory behind the design, but what else is there? Is it because the building is so slender that it doesn't do that, or that it's so smooth, or yeah. how do you strike that it, right balance? You know, so I, I think that the, the, when, when you, I think that it's, you have to go back. You have to be respectful of the other architect's accomplishment first. I think uh, if you look at the Jing Mao Tower, it's a very symmetrical, very symmetrical, very formal form, formal, you know, symmetrical, axial. North South, you know, you know, and uh, has lots of texture. It's a metal uh, texture. It's like a, you wear a metal jacket, right? Heavy texture. It's a very solid feel. Very solid mass. So very powerful, right? So it's a very solid, very, 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 very heavy, heavy articulated the skin. If you look at the Jing Mao. It, it strikes me is about very clean, sharp. Uh, uh, that uh, like a very aggressive kind of aging kind of age, create lots of age corners. Age. We're talking about Shanghai World Financial. Center. Yes, yes, yeah, ahead, yeah. So you, right, yeah. So it, it, it's different from Shanghai World Financial Center. is different. So they are creates very sharp edge kind of buildings, very sculpture, sculpted building, very clean line, clean line. So the reason you feel like we don't we did not upstage them, we, we do it in a different way. First of all, the building has a very smooth facade. Shanghai, uh, for, for Shanghai Tower, when we design, so a very, also it's very curved linear, and uh, it has a very, also it's very importantly, it's a very very transparent. You can see the glass through. So the other two building is very opaque actually. So you see a solid mass. Mm. So we make the Shanghai Tower very transparent. You can see the layers inside and outside. So in that way, you don't feel that the, the, the volume of that you make the volume metrically. Uh, reduce the impact of the volume, but uh, you more work with the the light. 
so they let the light come into the building rather than reflect to the outside. So therefore, you don't feel like the, the mass against the other buildings. You don't have this tension. Therefore, you reduce the tension away. Um, you said something. You said something before that really surprised me. That most of the energy expenditure in a building goes to the elevators. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. How, why is that? And tell me, tell me how that works. Oh, because uh, for for a super tall building, it's different from your your hundred meter buildings. So you have so many floors. So the key is uh, the quality of service to the buildings. Uh, you want to take people in certain time zone. You take amount of people to transport them to the destinations. If you turn the building horizontally, it's like uh, you want to take a, a high uh, high speed rail from one place to the other very quickly. So the the energy you put, electricity you put into the elevators, number one, you cannot control how 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 much people use the elevator. People's actual movement is all spontaneous. You can trace certain pattern of people how people move in the building, like peak hours. But you cannot control how, how much people actually use the elevator. So the amount of uh, that's um, unpredictable. So so what I'm saying is the amount of energy reservation you, you not installed in, like you put in the storage you have to be ready. Anytime people the, when you whenever the peak capacity you hit it, you cannot say okay I'm running out of electricity so the elevator is not moving. But also the speed you need to be very fast. The faster the speed the elevator, the more power you have to put in there. It's like a drive a car. The faster you drive, the more gas consumption you need, right? So it's very similar. So, but you, you from when, when building reaches that tall, so like a, a Shanghai Tower, the speed of elevator, the fastest speed of elevator from ground to the top of observation is 18 meter every second. And that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy because so you have the, the five speed, the, the high speed elevator. The, the same thing with a car. You, if it, True. you understand, if you the car, if you, I, I hit, um, if I from zero to to hundred meter, if I need a four four seconds, I need to drive a Ferrari, right? But like, they cost lots of uh, gasoline. And I, I've <laughs> never I've never thought of it that way. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wanna, very similar. Yeah. I want to thank you for dropping by, uh, Xia Jun yeah. of uh, Gensler. You know, this this has been just a fascinating week in Shanghai, yeah. and your building is right in the middle of all of it. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I will be, it's my pleasure, Thanks and uh, I, I hope we can get touch base uh, later on.